Diamonds in the Rough NFL Draft Diamonds Time to Shine Hello, football fanatics. Chris DeServo here with NFL Draft Diamonds. Today, we are talking to a possible diamond in the rough in Hakeem Williams at the Division Three Whittier College in California. Division Three draftees such as Quinn Miners at a Wisconsin Whitewater give Hakeem more hope to put himself in the right position to be one of the few Division Three players to possibly hear their name called in the upcoming 2022 NFL Draft. Hakeem Williams, a lot of people give Division Three football the stigma that you can't get better at that level. There's not many pro athletes coming out of D3 nowadays. Why did you choose to go to Whittier College at the Division Three level? The reason I chose to go to Whittier College, let alone they were, they were very interested in me just as much as the other schools that are recruiting me. And I talk about this a lot. Um, I had a D1 or D2 bus mentality. And, um, of course, like, things didn't go as planned for me. But the way I see it now, um, God actually had a different plan for me. And so that's why I ended up at Whittier. And um, ain't no shame in playing at a D3, man. It's it's honestly a blessing. That's just how I look at it. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up choosing Whittier was let alone God. But also I felt I needed to take this path. And every year at Whittier, you improved, including the last season you got to play where you racked up just over 700 receiving yards and five touchdowns. What are you looking to do in this next season, and how are you looking to improve in your last season at college? Like you said, throughout my years, I got progressed. Um, in my last season um, that we were actually able to play, I had a, I would say it was much more a breakout season. Um, but... With the whole COVID situation, I was actually able to focus on things um, I needed to focus on to better myself as a player, um, as an individual. And honestly, I feel, especially I'm, I'm confident enough to say that I'm going to put up some numbers this year. Um, I'm, just, I'm just ready to get after it, man. What has life been like for you since not being able to play football with COVID restrictions, especially you being in California? How did you not only improve? you know, through an athletic standpoint, but also you said you had to work on yourself. How did you improve that way too? Okay, this this might sound crazy. So I was in track. So I'm a two-sport athlete at my college. I was in track at the time, had a track meet on Saturday. Then I remember it too, it was on March 8th, I got baptized. And so I'm thinking my journey is about to, it's about to start. And I'm all excited. I'm like, okay, let's get after it. And then March 9th came around. And that's when everything got canceled nationwide. And so, like most people, most athletes during that time, um, it was it was honestly hard because you didn't have your sport to be your outlet. You really weren't. Um, you didn't have that outlet, like I said. And that was, that was the hard part. And so I felt during that time, I was more so building up my relationship with God. And I still am. I still am. And um. That's the thing that kept me strong throughout this whole period of time. It allowed me to work on myself as an individual, on the field, off the field, um, in the classroom, of course. And just building up my relationship with God has honestly been the reason why, like, it um, pushed me through on this whole COVID situation. And like I said, I'm just, I'm excited to get back to it and just give all praise to him because without him, I wouldn't have, came this far, all honesty. From doing more research on you, I also know that you've been, you know, at the front of the Black Lives Matter movement, especially, you know, where you're located at. Could you give our viewers a little bit more of an insight on how you've been able to help out that movement and what you've been able to do to put your voice out there? Just being able to do research on everything that's going on um, with the whole BLM movement. And I understand there are some people that don't understand um, with what the movement is and um some people that do understand and i would say i was one of those people that are in the middle and like i i knew what was going on and it was honestly tiring and i didn't want to be one of those people that just constantly talked about we need this to happen we need this to happen we need this to happen 
And um, I would say I actually led with my actions and where um, what decision was best for me. And so I honestly got involved with two protests um, when everything got started up. And it, it was, I would say it was honestly hard um, at the time because of course, um, us as a nation, we have, we have our issues, we have our problems that we need to fix, not only with the black community, but just with within every, with everything, I would say. And I just feel there's so much division going on within America. And I just feel as a nation, we need to get right. And honestly, I would say that's the, one of the reasons why um, I've been doing what I'm doing with the whole BLM thing. Um, and when there's issues going on within America, I, I'd rather speak on it and try and get a better understanding than staying silent. Because I feel if you're silent and you know what's going on, then you're most likely a part of the problem instead of actually acting on it and trying to better better yourself, but as well as the nation. So I just rather not stay silent and rather use my voice and use my platform to keep people informed, but also um, keep myself informed. Where does that confidence come from in your voice? I also noticed from looking at your Instagram, you're not afraid to go on Instagram live and, you know, let your voice out there. Where does that confidence from, insi from inside come from? Have you always had it or is it something that you just recently discovered in the past few years? I would say, of course, like before I got to college, um, in my high school, high school years, like, I was looked at as a leader my junior and senior year, and I had that voice, but not as strong as it is now. And the reason why I say it's as strong as it is now is because, like I said, I was able to work on myself, um, really build up my relationship with God. Um, and then when I go live, um, preaching the gospel, like I understand it's a tough subject. Not too many people want to hear it. Um, not too many people really want to listen, but there are people that are willing to listen. And it, all, all I need is that one person, like, really listen and get the message. And I would honestly say, like, where my confidence comes from is, like, just me building up my relationship. And um, it ain't no shame in it, man. Like, that's, that's I give praise to the Most High. And he's honestly been the reason why I've gained so much confidence during this whole COVID situation. And I'm just ready to show it on the field, man. How has your faith helped you stay on the path that you are on today? My faith, I, I understand at times, and this is something I also talked about on my lives recently, is about a storm. And the way I look at our situation, the whole COVID situation, even my situation, um, after I had gotten baptized, uh, I know God tends to throw situations at us, tends to put us through storms, and it's either going to make you stronger or it's, you're going to fall back. And I just felt, and this is honestly how I felt even before I had gotten um, baptized. Um, with, with my faith, um, I know God, I know God tests us. And so I would honestly, I would keep on pushing through situations when things get hard. And the way I look at it, my mom and uh, my older brother, they didn't raise a quitter. And so I'm not, I'm not going to quit when the going gets tough. I'm, I'm about to put on my armor and keep on pushing through it. And that's just how, um, how it's got to be. And with this whole situation, um, just me being constantly tested day in and day out, um, I, I would say I keep faith in the most high. Um, pray on things instead of complaining about it, first and foremost. I, I pray on things. and. Um, just let God do the work, and um, I just keep faith in Him because I know without Him I wouldn't be where I am today. Wouldn't have the confidence I have today, and um, just being able to like really push through my situations without Him. So I just keep faith in Him and just let Him work for me, and just I just watch how He works in my favor. How have your mom and your older brother helped you out through this elongated off season? I w I would say um. My mom has helped me out um, because she she keeps that positive mindset, of course, um, with family. Things could get tough at times. Uh, but I even um, told my mom, if we don't get a season, I might need to come back so I could like be able to showcase my talent. 
because I, I feel my situation, my plan that God has for me wasn't done yet. So I just, I got to keep pushing. And she, she was able to understand that. And without her, I haven't, um, I would say I wouldn't be where I'm at today, where I'm at today without her. Um, and with my brother as well, um, just with this whole situation, um, I would say he's been much more of a father figure to me um, through this whole, um, let alone this whole COVID situation, but just in life in general. Um, both of them have played a big role in my life. It has been a part of my confidence um, as well, not only just God, but they were a part of it. And I would say they pushed me to be a better version of myself every day. And um, without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so that's just a big shout out and big thanks to both of them. Um, but also, I would say uh, my godmother as well, too. I can't leave her out because it's just having the right people in my life, I would say, have been the things that push me to better myself as an individual um, on and off the field. Talking about family, how important is it for you not to just to be part of a football team, but to actually be part of someone you can, so like a group of kids you can call your family. How important is that for you to give that atmosphere off in whatever locker room you're in now or whatever locker room you may be in the future? Honestly, um, just, just with that, with the whole family aspect, I would say um, in the past, I wouldn't, I'd be more closed off because um, that's who I was, but now I just feel we we got to spread more love than um, we got to spread more love nowadays because everyone's too negative. And um, the locker rooms that I'm in, I just want people to look at me as either a younger brother to them or a big brother. And like, I just want them to know that I'm there for them, regardless of like any situation, because I think there's everything is bigger than football. Like, I love the game to death, but if someone's going through something, um, that's someone is my teammate, I just want them to know, like, hey, we're just, we're not just teammates. Like, I'm your family and I'm here with you every step of the way. So I just want you to understand that I'm here for you. And so that's, I just want that um, big brother or younger brother um, feeling in the locker room. So that's, that's my take um, on that question. Hearing players like Quinn Miners, you know, out of Wisconsin, Whitewater, getting your name called in the third round as a Division Three player, does it give you a little bit more fire in your stomach preparing for the season and also what could possibly happen afterwards? Honestly, yes. It, it gives me so much fire because um, actually seeing him in the Senior Bowl, I was like, okay, like this, this is this is crazy because you rarely see D three or. Um, you get some D twos that are um, participating in the Senior Bowl and being able to compete with D one guy, and seeing him go third round is like honestly unheard of for like a D three player. Like maybe the later rounds are even going undrafted, but going third round that's that's honestly big. And I'll say it also gave me that fire that I needed because at times like before this whole situation, I would be thinking. Oh, I'm going to go undrafted. Um, I might have to be an undrafted free agent. This, this, and this. But actually being able to, like, see that, like, it's like, okay, I could I could actually get drafted. I just I just have to ball and I have to just show out. Um, so it gave me that fire that I needed going into this season. Do you feel being a two-sport athlete um, and having that track and field background has helped you on the football field? I would say it has because um, let alone with speed, I know it's you got track speed, you got football speed. Um, but growing up and um, always doing multiple sports, um, I remember my coaches um, would tell me um, that when you get recruited, some coaches look at whether you were a two-sport athlete or a one-sport athlete. Of course, you get those freakish athletes that are one sport athletes that just play football, but you could even look at the NFL. You you had you just had DK run a one hundred like probably the first time ever since he got drafted or even once he got to college. Um, he was a two sport athlete. You could look at all the statistics. You could see the top notch athletes that are in the NFL 
for two sport athletes. And I just feel track has honestly helped me better myself um, as an individual um, on the field as well as off the field. So um, it's honestly been a big factor um, to um, my career. One thing associated with being a track and field guy is speed. But from looking at your film, you're not just the type of person that's going to burn somebody. You like going up there and making contested catches. Is that a skill that you've always had or is that something that you developed through college? I would say I've had this skill um, somewhat in high school, but I would say it's gotten even better now because, like like I said, with the whole situation, um, the whole COVID situation, I wasn't really able to focus on, like, perfecting my craft as much because with me ending my track season, it would normally end in May. And so I'd only have, like, the rest of May to, like, August to really prepare for football. And when the whole COVID situation got started up, it allowed me to focus on, like, okay, I need to focus on this. I need to get better at this. I need to do this. And I just feel it's honestly something I'm developing even much more better because there's always room for improvement. Like with the contested catches, like I could be so much better at them, but I feel I still need to work on it and I still need to get better at it. So um, it's still it's still in the works, I would say. If given the opportunity to compete for an NFL roster, would you be willing to not so much as focus on being a wide receiver? maybe focus on more of a team, you know, player, like maybe being a special teams guy, is that something you'd be open to? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to anything. If um, the coaches want me to play on the opposite side of the ball, if they want me to play special teams um, and not really get receivers reps, I'm not, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm honestly there trying to win and trying to help my team win. And once my number is called, then, then I'm going to take the opportunity. But, if that means I'm special teams for like the first two years, so be it. I'm I'm ready, and that's all I can say, honestly, man. What are the little things that you do on the field that you feel m- might go unnoticed, maybe to people watching your film? I would say some things that go unnoticed, of course, like when I have those catches, um, but actually being able to block, and I feel as a receiver, that's a big thing. Um, and that's something I've also learned in college or I'll say towards the end of my high school career. Um, if you want the ball, you got to be able to block. And not too many guys really understand that because they think it's all for sure. Like, oh, I want catches. I want touches. You're not going to get those if you can't block your, your teammates or can't even block in the run game. So I would say that's something that goes unnoticed. Every time I go out for a block, um, that's something um, people really don't notice with my film. What about the ability to throw the ball? I saw that one throw that you had against Lewis and Clark. That was a nice touchdown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, honestly, um, I, I would I would say um, I, I, could, I could throw the football when I was younger. I played quarterback like in middle school. But then as soon as I got to high school, um, I tried out for quarterback. Didn't work out. So I got moved to receiver because I'm, I'm a fast guy. Um, but that that play was in the works, and that was the first time it really hit, and we scored off of it. Um, but in the past, we we ran it, um, it worked, but we never really scored off of it. So, did not just as much as it caught people off guard, it caught me off guard when it got caught in the huddle. And um, I remember my quarterback was like, "Hey, Kim, it's your time to shine," and I was I was just shocked. I'm like, "Oh, we're really about to do this." And so he threw it to me, and then I threw it to my teammate Moy. And Moy ended up scoring off um, of the play, and it, it just it just caught me off guard. I, I was pumped. The whole team, our whole team, was pumped. Um, but I, I honestly could say I could throw that thing too, man. It's just the confidence that not only your teammates have in you, but your coaching staff. Uh, I mean, you said you've been working on it, but uh, I mean to put that in the game and actually have you perform it must have given you a little bit more confidence. You know, going back to that huddle, knowing that these guys trust you more than just catching the ball. Yeah, we worked we worked on it um, throughout um, practices, and it it was just something that was I didn't think we would do it like right then and there, and I was like, okay, like I'm throwing this, so I gotta I gotta make it perfect. And the ball wasn't all that pretty, but it got to destination, and we scored off of it. Um, so that's all that matters. One thing you're also not too shy about is you post some YouTube videos up. I see that you got to work out. Who's that videographer that you have? Because he's got you out there looking like you got some top five, like, you know, like film studies out there. I mean, that guy's nice. 
uh, my videographer uh, is the homie Andy Satello. Uh, he also does videos for um, one of the other or a few other trainers I work with. Um, but big shout out to him, man. And it was crazy. He barely started last year um with the whole videography thing and his his business is taking off like he's doing he's doing solid um he works with tyree kill um from the chiefs um he worked with i believe troy hill from the rams recently and he he's been he's been doing his thing so big shout out to him and i would say we got something in store um this upcoming season so just stay tuned with that um, but big shout out to him. Is it key for you to put out film like that so that way more people can get, so that way you can get more of a notice from people? I would say, yeah, that's um, a big thing, I would say, because, um, of course, like on the D1 level, you got people on that video um, for you or do those little highlights for you. So it's, um, so people know about you. And I feel the fact that I'm on this level um, I got to get after it myself because nobody's going to do it for me. So that's why I'm out here networking, I would say. And I'm getting in touch with people that I need to get in touch with. And me putting out videos like that to show people, let alone I'm working. But, hey, just just keep your eyes on me. And don't don't forget about me because I'm making a name for myself. So stay tuned. That's just how I look at it. Well, Hakeem, I promise you I'm definitely going to stay tuned. It looks like that's all the time that we have for today. I just wanted to say I really do appreciate, you know, you taking the time to give me an NFL draft diamonds and also our fans a little bit look, you know, deeper into what type of player, you know, we got coming out with your college next year. I look forward to seeing your highlights. And I look forward to seeing some more film study be putting out there. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Not yeah, no problem. Take care. <laughs> nah, take care, man. Stay safe. Okay. Once again, I'd like to thank Hakeem Williams out of Whittier College in California. Hakeem has his work cut out for him, but knows the road doesn't have to end at Whittier College on his football career. With hard work and dedication, Hakeem looks to be the next diamond for one lucky NFL team as he pursues his dream of playing football at the professional level. And for more player interviews like this one, check out NFL Draft Diamonds at our website, nfldraftdiamonds.com. Also, connect with our social media pages on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for up-to-date news and stories about football in the world today.